And then lastly, look at verse number 17. This is probably one of my favorite part of this story re regarding the shepherds. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Now, what does that mean? So they went there, they saw the baby, and what did they do? They, they published it, right? They went out and started preaching the gospel. But notice what it says. It says, they made known abroad the saying that was told them. So let me ask you, did they go out and talk about their personal testimony? Is that what it says? Did they talk about their experience, that feeling they got? Is that what, they, is that what it says? No, it says they made known abroad the saying that was told them. So they saw it and they're like, well, let's go talk about what God's word said unto us. And this is a great example of men who went out to preach the gospel and they weren't preaching themselves, but they preached Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. Right? What is soul winning? Soul winning is talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not talking about how you overcame alcohol. How you're just saved from a life of sin. You know this, um, what's that church called? Victory outreach type. Let me tell you about my testimony, brother. I don't care about your testimony. I want to hear the testimony of the Lord. Because let God be true and every man a liar. And your experience and your testimony, I'm not saying it means nothing, but in comparison to the gospel, it is nothing. And unless your testimony is, this is how I got saved, by believing on Jesus Christ, we don't care what kind of lifestyle you came from. The world doesn't care what kind of lifestyle you came from, and you don't get people saved that way. That's right, right. I preached a sermon called Vainglory of, of Testimonies, and it ticked off a lot of people, particularly from that type of church. How dare you? I don't do cocaine anymore. Yeah, but now you struggle with pride, so what, what's up now? Hey, the shepherds, and, and let me say this. I mean, didn't the shepherds experience something awesome? I mean, they got the angel there, one angel, they're just like, and then all the host, I, and they're terrified. I mean, this is a glorious sight. They could have gone and just said, you won't believe what I just saw. You know, I saw a host of heavenly angels. They said glory to God in the highest and all these things and all this light. And then they went, but they didn't say any of that. They, what, what were they publishing abroad? Unto you is born this day a city in the city of David, a savior. Because far more glorious than any angel or host of heavenly angels, far more glorious is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. They may know abroad the saying that was told them concerning the child. That is awesome. Yeah. And this is a good soul winning principle that when you go out there, you know, nothing wrong with giving a little bit of your testimony of how you got saved. But you know what? You should be preaching Christ and Him crucified. Amen. Amen. Because here's the thing, you might run into someone who had it worse than you. So now what? Or you may not even have a pretty crazy background. You're like, yeah, when I was like six, I stole a candy bar. God saved me from stealing, you know, Snickers, and I, and I struggled with that. And, you know, to this day, you know, I still, I'm tempted. But God can save you from that, too. It's like, I don't steal candy bars. <laughs> Because you're going to run into, how about, how about people who are just clean cut people? Who are just like righteous, but in the eyes of the world righteous, where they're just clean people. They are, they're, they're, they're you know, just regular law-abiding citizens of this world. They've never been divorced or, you know, they've never, they don't commit adultery. They don't drink. They don't smoke. They don't run with those who do. They're just not safe. How's that going to help them? They're like, oh, man, I struggle with heroin. The person's going to be like, Okay. Well, you know, that's good that you don't do that anymore. You know, it's like <laughs> he's gonna think I don't need Jesus to not do heroin. I don't do heroin already. <laughs> that's why, folks, your testimony does not matter. Amen. And I'm not trying to be inside. If someone in here struggle with that. I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying in general that the the testimony of a person really does not matter unless it's referring to. Belief on Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And look, this is, this is as far as my testimony goes. If I ever give my testimony, I'll say, you know, I remember I used to believe the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
I believe that it was by works. I thought I had to like keep God's commandments to be a good person. I believe the same exact thing until someone showed me from the Bible that I don't have to do those things. There's only one thing I have to do. Can I share that with you? That's as far as my testimony goes. <clears throat> David said, thy testimonies are my delight and my counselors. Amen. Amen. That's why I take testimonies with a grain of salt. <clears throat> oh, you know, you don't believe reprobates can be saved. I know this one reprobate, he's a Christian. He works in the children's ministry. <laughs> he does all these things. You know, what about his testimony? Well, I believe God's testimony. I don't care how convincing someone's testimony is, how involved they are. They, they can even say the right things. But if it goes against what God says, then you know what? I, I, thy testimonies are my delight and my counselors. That means when I look at two categories of testimonies, I go to seek counsel from the testimonies of the Lord. Is this correct? No? Okay, you're a liar. <laughs> that person's a liar because God said it. Are you just going to write off this person's experience? Yes. Amen. Are you just not going to believe what they said, but they're so sincere? Nope, not going to believe it because God said it. Yeah. My soul, Psalm 119, verse 167, my soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. So the shepherds were awesome people, even though they're nameless. Even though we don't know necessarily how many there were, but there are some pretty awesome people because of the fact that they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. They started preaching the word of God, telling people about Jesus Christ, preaching the word of God, telling them about baby Jesus. And it's recorded in the word of God. We've, we can learn from their example. And if you get anything from, from, from this sermon, get this is that, you know, people during Christmas have a tendency to be a little selfish. They can be, right? You know, there's certain things that we want for Christmas. If we don't get them, we throw a fit or something like that, you know. Like, I have a list of things that I want for Christmas, and this is what I want, and this is what I want to happen. But what we should learn is from the examples of these shepherds who were selfless. That's really what they teach us, is to be selfless. <clears throat> they didn't say, hey, God, are you going to write our names down? Are you going to remember us? Are you going to, you know, do we get a part in the Bible or something? They were just felt like it was privileged just to, to be a part of this glorious event. Amen. Amen. And to be able to preach God's word and get other people saved. They left their priorities to make other people a priority. Right? That's what they did. And that's really what we should think about during Christmas is, you know, being a blessing to others. How about this? Get another person what they've always wanted and that person who's receiving everything that they've ever wanted, you should also seek to be a blessing to someone else and get someone else something they've always wanted. Esteem another better than yourself. Amen. Right? Think about Christmas as an opportunity to hit a reset button on the selfless virtue, to be a blessing to other people. Amen? Amen.